everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to take you through the steps of how to replace a base gasket or a head gasket if you will on a Red Max backpack blower. Now this information will cover Red Max backpack blowers all the way from EBZ 6500s all the way up and then a lot of the Husqvarna backpacks as well as they're essentially the same engines. So first I'll take you through the steps of diagnosing this problem and then things to look for and then we'll go ahead and go through the steps of disassembly, inspecting the engine, replacing the gasket itself and then reassembly after that. We'll take a look at this blower here and then I'll show you exactly what to look for. Alright, today on the bench here we have one of our, he's one of our regular customers and he does use his blowers quite a bit. They are well used. Now this one I believe is a 2019 model so it's a little bit older and it is suffering from a leaking head gasket. Uh, this customer is pretty good about taking care of his air filters and whatnot, so he does get really good life out of his units. If you're trying to diagnose one of these and it's not running right or you're having a problem with it, or if you're looking to actually purchase one used, if you see one at a swap meet or something, I'll just go ahead and give you a general idea of some quick things to look for. Now I did a video on these blowers as far as common problems, and I'll link that up above and you can go ahead and check that video out if you'd like. That video will cover some of the general issues these blowers have. So the first thing that I do when I get this thing on the bench is A, I'm going to pull the starter, I'm going to pull the recoil, I'm going to make sure this thing has compression, at least feels like it does anyway. Make sure it's not flat and just doesn't have any compression at all. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a flashlight and right here in this engine cover, now this one's kind of broken out but there's still plenty of room in here to look. You're just going to take a flashlight, you're going to shine it in there. Now once you shine that light in there, you're going to see all of that uh, oil on there and that wetness in there. That's a really good indicator of a leaking head gasket. Now, that being said, that doesn't always mean it's a head gasket problem. There is one more thing that can cause this leak as well that I have run into. Now, Red Maxes, they do like to vibrate quite a bit. And this intake right here, this insulator, these four bolts will come loose. And as you can see down here below, all of that wetness down there, that can also be caused by a loose intake manifold as well. So one thing you can do is just go ahead and grab this carburetor and just shake it, make sure it's tight and visually inspect these bolts. Make sure all four of them are tight. Now in this case, I can see the back bolts, probably hard to see on camera, but in the very, very back there, I can see that that bolt is loose. So I know this head gasket is leaking for sure. That is one thing to look for as well, as you'll see. Now this bolt's been changed. Um, we've worked on this blower several times in, the, in years past. So this bolt has been changed, but you will see bolts loosen up and back out. And that is another good indicator that the head gasket is leaking. So first, let me take this cover off of here and we'll get a closer look. Okay, we got the engine cover off of here and I went ahead and took the muffler off as well, just so you can get a better view of this. So again, you can see all of the oil and how wet it is all the way down the side of the engine. Now what I did was on that bolt right there, that back head bolt, that one's typically the one that will come loose first most of the time. Uh, that one is loose. I did kind of wiggle it with a screwdriver and it is loose. I can't, uh, it's hard to hold the light and show it at the same time. But that bolt is definitely loose so the head gasket is leaking. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and disassemble this thing. These things are really simple to disassemble. They're not real complicated, so I'll take you through the steps. Let me set the camera up and I'll kind of show you. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this intake boot off of here. Now you'll get a lot of oil inside the intake boot with these things like this. This is actually quite common because of the, the engine design with these Red Max is called the Stratus, Strato Charged. Uh, cylinders and it kind of basically regurgitates its own oil if you will so you will see quite a bit of oil in the intake with these things it is normal next i'm going to disconnect the throttle cable i'm going to disconnect the fuel lines i'm going to go ahead and there's two clamps there's one here and there's one down here let me get a light so you can see there's two screws one here and one here that hold that one holds a harness and one holds a throttle cable. I'm going to go ahead and take those both out. And I'm going to take the clamps off of the throttle cable and the wiring harness because I always end up losing them if I leave them on there. Next, I'm going to disconnect the kill switch here. 
kind of have to be careful with the wiring on these things with Red Max. Uh, they, these connectors and stuff like to break apart internally in the sleeve. The wire rocks they break apart. So if you pull on it and you feel like it's not rigid and it's like kind of springy, that that connector will need to be replaced. That is something to be aware of. Go ahead and disconnect the throttle at the carburetor. Next, I'm going to switch over to a 10 millimeter. And then underneath of this thing, you have two nuts. You have one here and you have one under here. You're going to take those out. And then on the back of the blower, at the very top, there's two screws up here. You're going to go ahead and take those out. Now, with these two upper screws, if it's a newer one that's never been disassembled before, you'll see the Loctite on here. Red Max likes to pile on the Loctite on these two screws. So every once in a while you'll get one, you'll try to take it off and it'll either snap off in the motor, in the mount itself, um, or you might have to leave both screws in there or leave one in loose because it'll, you won't be able to get them out because of all the Loctite. It can be a pain in the butt sometimes. Okay, now that that's done, you can go ahead and take the blower off of the frame itself. So go ahead and just tilt it forward and then you're just going to lift it right off and then you can get the frame out of your way. Next what you're going to do is you're going to flip it over on the back side and on the fan you have four screws. You're going to go ahead and take those out. These generally come out fairly easily, but every once in a while you'll get one. Oh, there it loosened up right at the last second. So go ahead and take those four bolts out, and then you can flip it back over. Well, let me show you the motor mounts. There's four motor mounts. There's two here down at the bottom, and there's one up here and one up here. You're going to go ahead and take those out next. I'm just going to crack them loose because I never know. These things will also get full of dirt and grease. And Now with those loose, you can just go ahead and grab the engine, give it a little shake, and pull it right off. Now that the engine is off of here, I'm going to go ahead and take the top cover off of here, and there's two screws, so we'll take the boot off here, the plug boot. Now, here's another common problem with Red Max, is the engine covers will actually cut these wires in half like this. So that is something I see quite a bit, so I'll have to fix this. Go ahead and pull the wire out of the little holder right here on the front. Then there's two screws on the top. Take those off. Then you can just take this cover off. I'll go ahead and get the spark plug out of the way too. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and take off all four of the head bolts. So you're going to have two right here, and then through these two holes, you have the other two as well. That one was loose. That one was loose. And that one was a little bit loose as well. Go ahead and just grab the engine, grab the cylinder, give it a little shake. You can pull the whole thing straight off. Next, what I'm going to do is just try to knock these head bolts out of here. Sometimes they'll get stuck in the cylinder. Just go ahead and set those aside. Next, what I'll do is I'll just do a quick visual inspection of this thing. So as you can see, it's this is broke right here. Every once in a while, you'll get them where one of these sides right here is completely blown out of it. Uh, this one wasn't that loose. If the cylinder's been loose for a long time and the guys are still running it, usually what will happen is the head will bounce on the block itself. You can kind of see some marks right here that are a little different than the rest of it. 
And that's usually a good indicator where the head was kind of moving around, shaking around, if you will, and bouncing on the block. Uh, another big problem is if they've been running this thing for a long time with a leaking head gasket, what happens is, is that bolt is in here, but that bolt is just shaking around and bouncing around, the head's beating on it, and what it'll do is it'll take out the threads in the block. So then you'll either have to put a time cert, or we use time certs here, I find they're a lot easier to deal with. Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, this actually is a time cert. So this one we did repair at one time, you can see that sleeve in there right there. Looks a little different than that one. So this one has had a time cert put in it. And that's usually, that's pretty common because with the head loose, it's just sitting there and it's beating around and it's beating these bolts to death and then it'll, it'll take the threads right out of the block. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a quick visual inspection of this piston. I'm gonna make sure that it's okay. Uh, one thing you're gonna wanna do is just kinda grab the rings and pick up and down on them check the ring lands red maxes they are fairly high compression engines so if you're not using good fuel they will take out the uh, ring lands on these things and they will the piston rings will get really loose this one is a little bit loose but it's it's not bad it's runnable it's it's perfectly fine and then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to do a visual inspection of the cylinder to make sure that there's no real uh scarring uh, and then also a uh, chrome missing, the uh, coated chrome, if you will, in the cylinder. It'll turn a white color. Once you see that, then you're getting to the point where you need to replace it. Um, basically, it just it'll affect how it runs, and it won't run right after that. Now, this thing is dirty as it is. This is something that is pretty normal, at least for what I see here in Arizona. Um, any kind of dirt or oil on these things, the dirt's just going to stick to it and make a mess out of everything. Unfortunately. So it is something that is uh, pretty normal here, unfortunately. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this head gasket. If you've ever had to remove one of these head gaskets, these things where the bolt holes are, they can be a bear to scrape that gasket off of there. Um, and you can spend quite a bit of time trying to get these things good and clean. For some reason, the gasket just loves to fuse itself to this cylinder head, and it can be difficult to get off. So I do have a little trick that I use. You want to take a little ball peen hammer. Now this is something an old machinist taught me many years ago. What you're going to do is you're just going to tap around that bolt hole, each one of them. And what that does is it just sends like a harmonic through the cylinder itself and that helps break up that gasket. So you don't want to tap it too hard. You don't want to damage the hole or the cylinder because you can if you're not careful. So just give it a nice light tap. And once you see that gasket start to break apart like that, it'll just basically fall right off now at that point. You might have to do a little bit of scraping, but for the most part, especially around here, it makes it a heck of a lot easier trying to get this gasket off of here. So that's a little trick you can do. Now I'll just get my scraper and I'll finish the job with a scraper. It won't take much now. Just make sure you get all of that old gasket material off. Okay, so that's clean. Everything came off on the engine side, so there's no issues there whatsoever. Now the next thing I'm gonna do real quick before I clean this, is I'm just gonna check the exhaust port. Make sure there's no carbon buildup. You will see a lot of carbon buildup in the exhaust ports on these blowers to the point where it'll almost close that exhaust port off completely. So if you do have a blower that's low on power, it's not running right, it doesn't sound right, you might wanna check your exhaust port just to make sure that it's clean of carbon. Um, so now that this is basically ready to clean, I'm going to take this over to the uh, solvent tank and I'm just going to give it a quick brush, wipe it down real quick and then I'll get a new gasket and get ready to reassemble. So I'm just going to give this thing a quick brush here in the solvent tank. I'm not going to go crazy making this thing perfect. You don't need to, it's not necessary. With the age of this blower, this thing's already ingested so much dirt in its lifetime. It, you know, you don't have to make it perfect. 
I just try to get a lot of the big heavy dirt off. Clean this mating surface here, just kind of wash out the cylinders. Cylinder. Okay, it's clean enough. I'll just do a quick brush on the engine. Again, you don't have to go crazy. If you have some brake parts, brake parts cleaner or carburetor cleaner, any of that type of thing, you can go ahead and do all that, clean it with that as well. This solvent is really light on everything. It doesn't harm anything. It doesn't hurt seals or bearings or any of that type of thing. Brake parts cleaner can be a little more harsh on crank seals, so you want to be careful with that but I've never really experienced any major problems using it. Every once in a while with these bottom ends, they will get so dirty that I'll have to use a brake parts cleaner to get in there and clean it out. All right, that is clean enough. I'm just gonna go ahead and blow it off with some brake parts cleaner and then I'll blow it out with some air. So I'm just gonna blow this out real lightly. Okay, now that I got everything cleaned in the solvent tank, I'm just going to go ahead and do another quick visual inspection on this thing. I'm going to go ahead and check the bottom end as well. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this thing and try to lift up and down on it and make sure it's tight. That is something with these Red Max as well. Over time, the, the bottom ends will loosen up and fail. So I just want to make sure that it feels good and tight. And you can start to see the wear on this piston from dirt and just use. This thing has a lot of hours on it, but it's still in decent condition. Um, now this customer, he's pretty good about taking care of his stuff, so he will try to run these things as long as he possibly can. But you can see how uh, the discoloration in the piston that is showing some pretty good wear on it. But no major scarring on it, it looks pretty decent. Um, it is not tore up real bad. I'm pretty sure that we have done a top end on this thing at some point during its life as well. Again on the cylinder, I'm going to just do a quick visual inspection of it, make sure that it's okay that there's no major scarring or chrome, if you will, the chrome missing um, in the cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and just check, do a visual inspection of this intake gasket as well, make sure it's intact, make sure the carburetor's tight. I'm going to check all of these intake bolts as well. I'm going to make sure that they're good and tight before I reassemble it as well. Um, my mating surface is good and clean. I'm just going to kind of wipe everything down. Now, with these straddle-charged engines, if you will, in these ports right here, you want to make sure that everything in here is clean. There's no debris or gasket material, any of that type of thing that might be trapped down in there. So take a flashlight, just do a quick visual inspection, and make sure it's good and clean. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the head gasket on here. And then this is just a Husqvarna head gasket. I'll try to get the part number there for you. Here's the part number. Now these head gaskets do go on a specific way. This is the top of the gasket. You can see where it says fan on it and an arrow pointing that way. So what you're going to do is this is where the fan bolts to. And this is the back of the engine, obviously, and this is the front of the engine where the starter is. So you want that arrow pointing at the fan. So just go ahead and slide it over the piston. And then it, this little notch right here should be towards the back, just like that and then all of your ports and everything are lined up properly. So once you have the head gasket on like that, you're good to go. 
Now I'm just going to spin these piston rings. I'm going to make sure that they are lined up with the anti-rotator pins, if you will. You got one on the top piston, one on the bottom. Just want to put them in the right place. Make sure you can squeeze the rings together. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put my cylinder on. Now this is the front of the engine, so your intake is over here, your exhaust is over here. So my intake's on this side. So what you're going to do, I'm going to try to do this so I can do it on camera, is I'm just going to squeeze these piston rings together like this. Now this cylinder is tapered. It's got quite a bit of taper on it, so it does help a lot putting these things on. So I'm going to go ahead and just squeeze those rings together and hold them in place. And I'm just going to give this thing a little bit of a wiggle. It'll slide right in and I'm going to push it down. Now that that's done, I can go ahead and start putting my head bolts on. I'll just put the two in the back. And now these front ones, you'll just have to kind of run it down through the grooves here. So you can just drop it straight in. If you're using a gun, go really lightly just to run them in, get them started. Don't go crazy on them yet. This one you can put in by hand. Now I'm going to run them down until it just barely touches. Okay. Next, I'm going to take my T27. I'm going to take my T handle and I'm going to tighten these things down. Now I've done this so many times over the years, I just know how to where to put them by feel, where I want them. I do want them good and tight, but again, these are small bolts, so you don't want to go crazy on them, otherwise you can strip them very easily. I'll try to find the exact torque spec on them. I want to say it's like six newton meters, something like six to nine newton meters. And I'm just going to go in a crisscross pattern. And I'm going to tighten these up nice and tight. Okay, that's good, that one's good, just double check them, now everything's good and tight. Now I'm just going to pull this thing, make sure everything feels good, and then next what I can do is just essentially start reassembling this thing. I'll put my top cover back on, and then those are these two little short bolts here. These do not have to be crazy tight. And next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put my engine mount bolts in right now. And I can go ahead and put my muffler on. I'm going to go ahead and shake it so the bolts fall all the way through. Make sure your gasket's in place. I know the exhaust port's clean. I've inspected it. Just go ahead and hold the muffler up there, push it onto the engine. Now I like to get all of these started first. So now that all three of them are started, I'll just run those home. And that's all they need. They don't need to be crazy tight. And I gotta fix this plug wire too for the customer, so I'll fix this here in a second. But I'll just show you the assembly part first. All right, so now that the engine's ready to go, I'm gonna take the housing. Now it's a good time if you want, go ahead and clean this thing up, take it to a pressure washer. I'll do it afterwards. Now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go ahead and drop the engine on there. You wanna make sure, make sure your fan is centered in the hole here before you drop the engine on. We'll go ahead and just drop the engine right onto there. You might have to give it a little bit of shake. Make sure your gap is closed all the way around the engine to the housing. Now that you're good to go, and again, I'm going to start these bolts first before I run them all home. And then I'm going to tighten them up. And that's all they need. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the 
clamp on this wiring harness while I've got it sitting here like this. So I'm just going to put it around the harness. I'm going to put the screw through the clamp. I'm just going to tighten that up. Now that's captured and ready to go. Next I'll flip it over and then we're going to do the fan. Go ahead and grab the fan and line it up with the four holes. And then take all of your bolts and all the fan bolts. These are these bolts with the larger washers on them. Go ahead and put them in. And again, I like to get everything started before I tighten them all down. Now the fan is on it and ready to go. So now what I can do is I can get the frame up here and put it back on the frame. So now that I got the frame up here, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to drop the bottom motor mounts in the frame first. So then you're dropping it in like that and then just go ahead and drop it, let it lay it back like that. Real simple. Double check your leaf guard all the way around just to make sure it's in the right position. And then you can go ahead and take your two upper mounts, your upper bolts, which are these. Again, get them both started first. And tighten them up. These will break off again very easily, so be careful. Next, I'm gonna do a visual inspection of this wiring. Red Maxes are definitely known for having wiring getting chafed and worn out. This one's got a little bit of a wear spot on it, but I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and hook that up. And then next I'm gonna put my throttle in, hook it back up to the carburetor. This is just reverse order of how you took it apart. Now before you start this job, if you're not sure, if you've never done this before, just go ahead and take some pictures of everything or a quick little video with your phone just so you know how it goes back together. It's really simple. These things are really simple and easy to work on, which is nice. Now you can go ahead and put your two nuts on the bottom. I'm just going to flip it up on its back. Go ahead and tighten those up. These don't have to be very tight. You don't have to go crazy on them. Next, I'll hook up the fuel lines. The black fuel line is your main feed, which goes to the part of the carburetor that has the little knurls on there, if you will. Lack of a better term. Can't, don't know what to think of it. <laughs> or don't know what to name it there. The little splines, if you will. And then the return line goes to the smooth one. Now I'm going to check this fuel filter because it's probably going to need one. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and replace it. I just have a little hook that I use to grab fuel lines. Now with Red Max blowers, you want to make sure on the fuel lines, because the fuel lines are really soft with these and thin, you want to make sure that it has this little ring on here that puts tension on the fuel filter so it doesn't fall off. Go ahead and slide your new fuel filter on. Throw it back in the tank. I'm going to prime it. All right, next, I'm going to go ahead and fix this plug wire really quick and get that done, and then we'll fire this thing up. All right, I got the spark plug wire fixed, and I just went ahead and threw a new spark plug in it as well. I'm just going to clean this intake boot out real quick, just wipe it out, all the excess oil. I'll go ahead and throw this on. Tighten up the clamps. All my kill switch wires are hooked up, throttle's hooked up. Throttle feels pretty good. Now one trick you can do with these throttles on these Red Max is they do get a lot of dirt inside of them and they do get sticky. I just take some brake parts cleaner and I take it with the straw on it. 
And I'll just go ahead and I'll put that thing right at the end of that cable and I'll just blow it right into there. And then what you can do is take some air, if you have it. If not, it'll work without it. And then I'm just gonna blow it. I'm gonna blow it right through there. And that helps to clean that cable out. Help it operate a little bit smoother. You can also use some penetrating oil as well. So let's fire this thing up, see how it runs. There you go just had to clean up a little bit but uh, it's good to go and I'll just put the cover back on and I'll pressure wash this thing and clean it all up it'll be good to go for the customer so any questions leave me a comment down below and that's pretty much the gist of it these things are really simple to work on just take your time take some pictures and and uh, you can definitely handle this yourself at home so any questions let me know appreciate you watching